Today, I'm showing you how to make an absolutely amazing apple mead recipe. Let's get started. So today we're making an apple mead. Sometimes you might hear this being called a sizer. A sizer is essentially a mead that uses apple juice, or just apples in general, in it. I absolutely love apples and I've been workshopping this recipe for five years. I have a whole video on the progression of it if you wanna go check that out. One of my big goals was to get this recipe to where I love it the most. So today you're gonna to see two things. You're gonna see an apple mead recipe and an apple and cinnamon mead recipe. Both are absolutely bomb and I can't wait to show you both. So we first need to start by talking about what you'll need for this recipe. Here is the recipe for each. This brew is carbonated, so I'm gonna show you a bottle carbonated version and a kegged version. There is a one gallon keg for anyone who's doing a smaller kegged version. The bottle carbonated will have some different results because it requires a bit of a different process. You'll notice that these recipes call for different kinds of apples. I've done this because in all of my recipe testing, I found that one single variety of apple didn't really give this brew any complexity. Adding various kinds of apples will allow you to get some real complex and fun notes because each apple is different. You can mix and match apples as you desire. This is my combination I like. You'll also notice I have this brew using part apple juice and part water in it. You might be asking, why not all apple juice? Well, I want to keep this brew at a lower ABV. Using all apple juice when combined with honey will really increase the ABV. I really like this recipe to land somewhere between 6 and 7%. Lastly, you'll notice that I'm using clover honey in it. My suggestion with this recipe is to use a lighter honey like clover, some wildflower, tupelo, orange blossom, some things like that. A more rich honey like avocado blossom, buckwheat, or honey that has a super strong profile doesn't normally jive super well with this recipe. So we've gathered our ingredients and we're ready to make this. I'm gonna start by taking all of my apples and dunking them in some boiling water for about 10 seconds. I'm doing this because most supermarket apples have a thin layer of wax on them. This can really mess with the flavor of the brew when you add them in. So by putting them in that boiling water, you're removing the edible wax thus getting rid of the problem. We are then gonna cut them up and freeze them. Some of you might be able to use an apple crusher on them and actually crush them up. I just don't have that capability. Freezing the fruit will allow you to get more fruit juice out of them. We aren't gonna add our fruit for a while, so go ahead and just keep them in the freezer. Now we mix together our honey, water, apple juice, and yeast. I would suggest using a yeast like the Lauvin K1V116 or the Lalvin QA23, both of these yeast do well with fruity flavors. Once you mix everything together, you wanna to take a gravity reading. Using a hydrometer, you're gonna measure the starting gravity of this brew and write it down. I'm gonna add some Fermate O, which is a yeast nutrient to the start of this brew. You want your yeast to be healthy, so adding some yeast nutrient will allow them to ferment in a healthy manner. Honey is generally low in nitrogen and yeast need that. Your primary fermentation will take anywhere between 15 and 30 days. Once you see the airlock slow down, you can take another gravity reading. If you're following my recipe exactly, your brew should land somewhere around 1.000 gravity. This is helpful for calculating your total ABV at the very end. From here, we hit a bit of a crossroads. If you're gonna keg this brew, you can now take and rack it into a new container and stabilize it. You can stabilize the brew by using either potassium sorbate and metabisulfite or pasteurizing it. You'll see the instructions for those on screen. This will halt any yeast fermentation and allow the apples that we're about to add to not be fermented on. If you're going to bottle carbonate it, you do not want to stabilize it. You want those yeast to stay alive. Instead, you're going to go ahead and add your apples to this brew and let it set for two weeks. Then rack off of the apples and add a non-fermentable sugar like erythritol, xylitol, stevia, or anything else to get the desired sweetness level. If you want to make the apple and cinnamon version of this brew, you will now add one cinnamon stick per gallon and let it set. Taste test that every day until you get to the cinnamon level that you desire and then rack off of that into a new container. Using a priming sugar calculator, you will add the required priming sugar to this brew and bottle it. 
In about three weeks time, you're gonna have a bottle carbonated apple mead. Returning back to the kegged brew, we're now gonna wait 24 hours after stabilizing and then add our apples. We add our apples at this point because the tannin or the skins of the apples actually add some more body to it, which is nice for this brew. Also, the sugars that are in the juice from the apples are able to actually impart in the brew without being fermented on. So I found this trick to work really well for me. It just allows for a more true apple character. You're gonna put those apples right on top of the brew and you're gonna make sure they're submerged every day. Let them set for about two weeks and then rack off of that. If you wanna make the apple and cinnamon version, again, you're gonna add one cinnamon stick per gallon and then taste test until the desired cinnamon level is achieved. Since this brew is stabilized, we can now back sweeten with honey. So we're gonna add about two pounds of honey to this brew. I recommend using a fine mesh strainer when racking to get off any of the apple chunks that are in the brew. Gently stir that honey into the brew and take another gravity reading to know your final gravity. From here, you can keg it. I'm putting one gallon of non-cinnamon apple mead into this one gallon keg I have and the rest of it into a five gallon keg. We are gonna force carbonate these. I can't quickly explain that, so go check out this video to figure that out. One thing I've found that really helps here is citric acid specifically. It just really makes this brew pop. So I went ahead and added about a quarter teaspoon per gallon of citric acid to this brew. It really helps. So right now I have one gallon of non-apple and cinnamon mead and five gallons of apple and cinnamon mead. I can't wait to taste test them. It'll take about three or four days to force carbonate. So let's go ahead and hop into the tasting. All right, here we are for the finale of this. This recipe has been in the works for a long time, as I'm sure you just heard. I um, have a few tips about it, but we're gonna go and, and taste them because that's what we're here to do. We're here to taste the mead that we've made. I've already got the kegged version. It, it went through the carbonation, forced carbonation process, about 30 PSI for three or four days. And you'll see it's not super clear. That's normally because the first few pours um, off a keg like this in this situation are not very clear. Over time, a lot of the stuff will cold crash to the bottom and you're like, first gallon will not be clear, but the next four will be. So this will get clearer with time. Um, we also have the single kegged version. So this one was the, the bigger version was the apple and cinnamon. And over here we have just the apple, more summertimey kind of version. So let's go ahead and get a pour of this one. Oh yeah, look at that. Looking good. Also force carved, of course. These one, uh, this one gallon keg will be, um, I'll, I'll be able to put some links down below if you're curious. You can tell this one's a little more clear and this is what I mean. This has had some more time. I guess I've, I had to do a little more trial and error um, to figure out the PSI for serving. So I've already kind of dumped off the unclear versions. So right hand, is the non-cinnamon regular sizer version. Left hand is the apple and cinnamon. Ooh, yeah. You can definitely, that cinnamon is really um, sweet. It gives a lot of sweetness to this. Mm -hmm. There's a, a quite a bit of um, fruitiness too. I think one important thing here is to use light honey don't use a dark honey because it will be too powerful and to me this recipe specifically needs like a light clover a light wildflower something that's not going to be abrasively like strong it, like a buckwheat honey would destroy this avocado blossom honey would destroy this thing so i'm gonna start with actually the uh the regular apple version no cinnamon in this Man, it's like a, we're sitting six and a half ish percent, I think. And I mean, it's just crushable. It's like an apple juice. I could go and sit on the porch with this. The honey character really brings forth the 
um, nice mead characteristics, but it also pronounces sweetness, which pronounces the apple character, as I've talked about earlier in this video. Oh man, carbonation makes it refreshing. Super good. To me, this is a more summer timey version of this uh, recipe because it doesn't have cinnamon. The cinnamon really kind of takes it to the next level to be uh, more wintry, late fall kind of vibe. Um, so let's switch over to that. We've got our summertime here. Here's our winter time. Oh yeah, this is definitely, I mean, the cinnamon's prominent. Um, you need to taste test your cinnamon sticks in the brew pretty much every day to see where they're at. I do think that cinnamon will grow, like the flavor of it grows over time. So you might err on the caution or err on the side of <laughs> um, less cinnamon flavor because I think it will get stronger. Mm, but the carbonation, the sweetness from the honey, this is like, I mean, this is a, um, apple cider essentially, but cold, of course, and carbonated. Y'all, I don't, I don't know how to say this other than this recipe, five years in development. I mean, I, I think I nailed this one on the head. It is so good. And I'm gonna, of course, give you the uh, recipes for both of these. I will tell you this. I don't believe this recipe is gonna be the same if you use, uh, if you bottle carb it, because bottle carbing is possible, but you can't use honey to back sweeten, which really helps in this situation. You can use a non-fermentable stevia, a xylitol, uh, erythritol, but it's not honey. It doesn't have the honey characteristic, which is unfortunate. Um, the bottle carving process leads to some yeasty flavors. It's definitely doable, but it's just not going to be the same. So I will go ahead and tell you the a bottle carved version, like right here, because I know some of you don't have the ability to keg. However, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're looking at me going, I want to do this, but I can't keg. Well, guess what? Right here. This is a one gallon keg. This thing, while it does cost a little bit of money, will allow you to force carbonate and start dipping your toes into the force carbonation realm, which is really nice, gives you more control. I really like it. And I'm not meaning to alienate people who need to bottle carb, so please don't feel that way. But I do wanna show you the options you have. So you saw the recipes, they'll be down in the description. You saw the whole process. Here's the last thing, and then I'm out. This video is gonna replace every one of my other apple and cinnamon mead recipes. And if you have followed the channel for a while, you'll note that I have done a lot of them. So this is the final apple and cinnamon or just a sizer recipe for the man-made mead channel. I don't think I can top this. It's too good. I mean, I've taken it to friends who've loved it. It's, it's very good. So if you want to make this brew, I hope you will go check out the the recipe below, watch the video to figure out how to do it, and I will see you in the future with another video. So cheers.